Okay, so the intermediate value theorem um, basically says that if you have a function and that function is continuous, so let me just draw an example of a continuous function. And um, let me plot two points. Let's say this is A and let's say this is B. Okay, so you've got a closed interval from A to B. Now, there are corresponding y values. This guy right here is uh, f of b, and this guy right here is f of a. So what the intermediate value theorem says basically is that for every value in between these two, if this function is continuous, then for every value in between these two, there has to be at least one corresponding x value which you know makes sense right so each one of the y values from f of a to f of b has a corresponding x value so if it's continuous that holds now if it's not continuous it doesn't necessarily hold it could hold but it's not necessarily true let me give you an example let's say you've got um, something like this and then you've got a jump okay so let's say you've got um, let's say this is uh, a let's say this is B and so here you've got F of B and right here you've got F of A so if the um, if the result of the intermediate value theorem would hold, that means that every y value in between these two would have a corresponding x value. Now notice that some of them do. For example, this guy right here has a corresponding x value. This one right here does too, but there's several that don't have a corresponding x value at all. And this is because it's uh, discontinuous. So that's basically what the intermediate value theorem says. Now I want to give you another example of a case where the conditions don't hold. So this is a discontinuous function. But the result still holds. So in other words, even though this function, let's say that this is a and um, let's say this is B even though this function is discontinuous so notice this would be F of A and this would be F of B so if you look in between these two every Y value has at least one X value corresponding to it so even though it's discontinuous the result still um, holds. So in this case, the result of the intermediate value theorem holds um, even though the conditions don't hold. So what all the intermediate value theorem says is that if it's continuous, then you're guaranteed an x at least one x value for every y value in between. If it's not continuous, it's possible that it could happen, but it's not guaranteed, much like you have in this case. So uh, from this is an important corollary, and um, that is that you can use this to find uh, zeros using the bisection method. Because if that's the case, if what I just said is true, if that's the case, imagine you have a function and let's say it looks, you know, something like, uh, let's just say something like that. Okay, so let's say, let's say this is point A, this is point B. Now imagine that this function 
you're not looking at this function. Let's say you're looking at, you know, a formula for this function. But let's say that you know that f of a is right here. Let's just imagine, why don't we instead of a, let's do just numbers. Let's say this is, uh, let's say this is, we're just going to make some up. Let's say this is 2. Let's say this is 7. So, and let's say this is negative 4. So if I find f of 2 equals to negative 4, and f of 7 is equal to, oh, I don't know, let's just say this is 8. Okay, so if I know that this guy is negative, and over here it's positive, well, if it's continuous, that means that there has to be a 0 in between. So what you can do then, the way the bisection method works, and we'll do an example in a minute, is that once you do that, then you can chop the interval in half from instead of 2 to 7. Um, you would chop it in half and then do the same test over on these two intervals and um, over and over until you approximate it. So um, let's do an example of using the bisection method. Okay, so um, we've got a function here, and we want to approximate using the bisection method a zero for uh, this function on this interval. Now, um, of course, this is a little tedious, but um, the idea is important because this is, you know, similar to what calculators and computers do when they estimate zeros. Um, so, first thing you do is um, we're going to find what f of 0 is and f of 1. Okay, and we don't really care what number it is, we just want to know whether it's positive or negative. So I'll plug in 0. 3 to the 0 minus 7 times 0, this is equal to positive 1. And if I plug in 1, I get 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. Okay. So because it's positive here and negative here, then that means that there's a 0 in the interval from 0 to 1. OK, so then what you do is you chop the interval in half, and you're going to do two more bisection methods. You're going to do one from 0 to uh, 1 half or 0.5. And then you're also going to do from 0.5 to 1. And you're going to see where this uh, condition holds. So then for this one, for example, you would go, OK, well, f of 0 is we already have that that's 1 and f of 0.5 this is 3 to the 0.5 minus 7 which is negative 5.3 so what this tells you is that there's a 0 in the interval from 0 to 0 0.5. So I'm not even going to bother with this one. I've already um, zoomed in right here. And I know that there's a 0 in the interval from 0 to 0 0.5. Now you can also do this. I'm just going to, you don't really have to, but I, I just want to show you. If you do um, f of 0.5, you get negative 5.3 from the one that we just did. And f of 1 is negative 4 from the one we did earlier. So here, they're both negative. So that means that there's no 0 here. Again, I didn't really have to do that, but um, I just wanted to show you. So since I know there's a 0 in uh, the interval from 0 to 0 0.5, then the next iteration 
is going to be, I'm going to break that up into two intervals. One from 0 to 0 0.25, so again you split it in half, and the other one from 0.2525, sorry, 0.5. So notice that each time you're um, getting more and more accurate. So here you would do f of 0, which is 1 from before, and f of 0.25, which is negative 5.7. So then you know that there's a 0 in the interval from 0 to 0.25. And you can do this as many times as you want, and you get more and more and more accurate um, each time you do it. But I'm going to leave it at that for now.